Hello there, this is uh, Richard Denning here from Medusa Games and uh, UK Games Expo uh, and uh, today I'm going to do a short video on how to use um, um, a Tabletopia demonstration um, to demonstrate your board games. This is intended for you are a board game publisher and you are thinking of using uh, Tabletopia and Twitch TV to live stream demonstrations of your, your games. Um, this would allow you to show your games virtually, whether that be um, just to um, friends during this time of lockdown or playtesters, um, but also to the great um, um, world in general as part of perhaps some of the digital events that are, that are happening this year. So in order for that to happen, there are different devices and things or different um, screens and settings that you'll need to, need to have um, set up. So um, to begin with, in my games room here, uh, I'm, I'm set up with a, with a PC with a couple of uh, with two monitors here, uh, a microphone. I'm using the Yeti uh, microphone, uh, which is a good um, podcast type uh, microphone. Uh, I obviously have a webcam. Um, set up so that I can project images of myself, and I've got a, uh, and, the, and these two monitors are going to help because it means I can use one of these monitors to control um, the stream, and the second monitor is is where the actual game is going to be played, and so um, that's obviously what I'm going to be keeping an eye on when we're actually running um, the the game. Okay, so um, it, let's let's start by by doing some of the the preliminaries that you're going to need to set up in order to to um, to um, to get there. Um, so you're going to need um, to get yourself set up uh, with a Twitch stream. Um, so here you can see that we're actually broadcasting live. So here I am actually on um, uh, the outside world there demonstrating um, the game. Um, I could go to other, other channels if I wanted, but I want, basically I'm set up on, on the Twitch um, uh, screen, um, system with a Twitch channel for Medusa Games. So I've already set that one up in advance. I'm going to need some broadcasting software in order to uh, broadcast that Twitch um, channel. So I'm going to be using OBS Studio. Now there are a number of different broadcasting softwares available. Quite a few people use different ones, but OBS Studio is actually fairly easy uh, to use. It's quite um, relatively simple <laughs> he says uh, i mean i struggle a little bit to get to get the hang uh, the hang of it but it's not too difficult to set up and as you see it can um support windows mac and even linux or linux um, um operating systems depending on what you've got so you need to download this so once you've got that installed um then you're going to have that running on your on your um uh, computer um, and you're going to need to connect uh, the OBS um, software to your Twitch channel, uh, which is done in the in, in the settings uh, for the um, uh, the OBS software. So once you've connected the two, um, then that means that when you hit the start streaming button here, you stream out um, whatever you've got going on on this OBS um, channel. Now I um, like to use what's called uh, studio mode. So when uh, this, th th when you first install it, it'll look a little bit like this. But there is this button called studio mode, um, and when you um, connect to studio mode, um, you get two sides to the screen here. So this is what we are um, broadcasting live. So this is what everybody out there uh, can see. This on the left hand side um, is other screens um, and would allow you to uh, set up um, other screens ready to transition across. So by clicking on these um, what are called scenes here on the left hand side, these are these are uh, screens or scenes that I set up in advance and you see that it is that it is um, showing on the left hand screen here what's to come if you like once I hit this transition button this transition button here will then change um, what you're seeing across to live live modes this is now um, on uh, what is actually going to be seen outside in the um, you know the great in the world and twitch TV. So, so basically, this allows you to preview a little bit, get yourself uh, set up on the left with what you then want to transition across to. And on the right hand side, you can see this is what the Twitch TV is broadcasting at the moment. Um, and this can be quite useful. Now, at the bottom of the um, 
the screen here, we've got these these controls. Okay, so there are different. Uh, you could reconfigure these controls to set it up as you as you wish. But um, uh, going from left to right here, you've got your your scenes, um, sources, the audio mixer, um, transitions, and um, the actual broadcasting controls to start um, and uh, stop um, um, recording mode. Um, so on the left hand side here, uh, let's have a look at these scenes. So scenes are a set of what are called sources. So this first scene, intro one, which is simply this picture of streaming soon reducer games, which I tend to put up just as I'm about to go live, um, that's simply an image. And you can um, and that's an image which I can change. Um, and I can add to different images or different scenes by these controls at the bottom. Intro two um, has um, a frame around the outside, um, a video capture device, which is the webcam that uh, is pointing at me at the moment, um, and also the display capture, which is going to be showing um, the, um, the the screen, um, so that you can um, you can be seeing you know the, the studio mode uh, setup here. Um, the screen right here um, is uh, set to look at my other monitor. And so you can still see the OBS um, screen over there. And if I change tabs, uh, that will show you what's on the other screen. That's going to be showing the game um, shortly. Screen left is is this left hand screen, um, and it's just set to sort of show to show the screen. Um, so each of these scenes can, is can, consists of a number of sources, and there can be many sources on here. Um, but as an example, uh, screen left here is looking at the display screen um, and also can have the frame if I want it to be to be visible. Uh, screen right, uh, there, there's the frame and the display screen. Now to add the sources to these, these you can you can make new scenes. You can make as many as you want. Um, so to make a new scene, you click that cross button there. You give it a new name. So let's maybe call um, end or to something like that. Maybe even we want to make a screen to end the show, um, um, you know, thank you screen. You would then click uh, to add sources to that. Those sources can be a variety of different things. So they can be um, audio, they can be uh, video, capture devices, um, they can be uh, they can be images. So with images, you can add existing ones. You can go off and find the ones that you've already got, or you can create a new image. And at that point. You go, you go off into your browser, um, and I've already sort of I've set up a number of sort of you know images in a folder that I might want to use, um, and now I've got it there. You'd obviously need to resize it um, and fiddle around with it to make the thing look like you want it. Uh, you want it to uh, to look. It's blinking me on this image. This isn't it. <laughs> Anyway, you get the you get you get the idea. You can you fiddle around with it until you've got it to the the right the right size. Uh, you can locate it on your screen where you want it to be, um, and you can bring different different things in here. So that end one has just got that logo on. But say I also wanted to be showing the um, this um, video capture device at the same time. There, that pops, and I can move myself around the screen and make myself bigger, bigger and smaller. Whatever you want to do. Um, so these scenes you construct from different elements, which are effectively audios, visual uh, images, text even. So I can I can add a bit of text. Uh, let's create some new text. Um, uh, maybe thanks for watching. Um, and there we go. Oops, that was a bit big, but obviously you can change the fonts and all this sort of um, this sort of thing. Go back into it and uh, pick properties. Um, well, that's me. Um, that's me. Text. You can lock the different layers, by the way, to make it easier just to work on one particular layer, so you're not accidentally moving uh, the other things. So, you know, you can make these different sizes. Um, different. That's obviously tiny font size there. Um, you can change different different fonts. Whatever you want to do. Okay. Um, and. Once you're happy with it, you know when you're ready. When you want to show it, you transition across, and then that that becomes the live, the 
the live mode. So let's go back again to that um, to this screen then. So scenes sources. So this is how you're going to bring in your game because on screen right here um, I have got set up to have a look at what is on my other monitor and what is on my other monitor is this game okay which is uh, Tinker Tailor right? um, this is a sort of prototype game I'm working on in uh, in, tin uh, in Tabletopia at the moment so um, this is the actual game this is live on my right hand monitor I can move elements around in it I can flip them over I can and if other players are playing they would also be able to interface with this game so we can all be playing the game on here now the question is can you can you hear what the other players uh, are saying so the way we've tell you to do um, game demos is to use um, to use discord so we have set up a discord channel for um, medusa games um, and you can obviously send out the invite if you want to join there's the there's the there's the invite there um, you, would, you would go to the Medusa Games um, channel um, and the idea would be that um, at Virtual Expo or any of the other virtual shows or even if I'm just trying to use this to um, demonstrate um, or to try out playtesting games um, I would tell people to join me in the Medusa Games channel um, the general channel or wherever I want them to come to um, and once they're all in there um, we can actually hear each other using Discord um, but there is a little catch here, which is that you need to be able for the listener to your stream to also be able to listen to this. So if you are simply wanting to um, play a game on Tabletopia with people listening, then you join up, meet up with them in your Discord channel, launch the uh, Tabletopia game, and basically share the. Um, share with them um, the the room uh, details of where the game is is happening okay but um, you may also want to be streaming your game so that in this scenario you are playing the game perhaps with people who um, came came to your stand at one of these virtual shows and said hey I'd like to try this game out so you you get them onto your discord channel you get them into the game and then you decide you're going to stream the game so hey guys what are you while we're demoing this I hope you don't mind we're gonna we're gonna stream this out so other people can watch it um, so the way you've got to do that of course is you've got to capture the audio from the discord channel so that the streaming software the OBS software can hear it so if I flip back to, um, to the uh, OBS software for the moment, we're watching the um, the the game here. Um, but the question is, can anybody hear the audio of the of the other players? Now you can see down here at the bottom, this is the audio mixer, and you can see as I'm speaking, this microphone is bobbling up and down because it's it's hearing what I'm what I'm saying through the um, through my Yeti. Um, um, microphone there but it uh, may not hear what the other players are saying and it's quite easy to to have a situation where only the person running the game's audio can be can, can be heard so um, you need to make sure you've got other audio channels so by default the um, OBS will have what's called desktop audio set up um, and that normally is set to just default which basically means noises that happen on the screen uh, such as um, such as the um, oops bobbled up for, for a second um, noises that happen on the screen um, such as the moving of pieces in in the game um, which do in tabletopia make a bit of popping and clicking sounds as things happen probably could be heard um, but um, the sounds from the other people are not coming through the desktop. The sounds from the other people talking to you on um, is going to be heard on on Discord. Yeah, so you're hearing it through your, in my case, my my headset. So what you've got to do is you've got to tell um, you've got to tell the OBS software to also capture the audio from the 
your, your headset effectively from your headphones so that the world can listen to that. So you need to add a second desktop audio channel, okay? Um, and you do that in the in in, in settings in, under the audio settings. And here you see we've got a desktop audio um, and desktop audio two. So desktop audio two, I've set that to be speakers MPOW HC, which are my my headset. Um, so sometimes you may have to have a fiddle around with what um, you're setting the audio to, so that the sound, so that it makes uh, it clear that what is coming in, what sound that you can hear on this speakers here, is what the world will then be able to to hear. So that's an important step, and um, I only discovered that by painfully sort of streaming out a whole demonstration where the only person that could be heard was me. Um, because our, my sound is being captured through my microphone down here at the bottom, so those are, those are important settings. Okay, um, over here on the right, you can fiddle around with your screen, um, your um, your screen, your scene transitions, whether they're going to fade or cut, and how quickly the transitions uh, take to happen. Finally, on the far right hand side, you've got this ability to do uh, streaming. And recording um, and um, change from the studio mode to the screen mode and access the, the settings. So that effectively is then how um, you can have a game happening which is so this is happening on my second monitor. Uh, I can be communicating with uh, people in Discord if they're in the same Discord channel as, as, as me here. And uh, then I'm capturing the second monitor display um, and I'm capturing the audio both from my microphone and whatever I've set up here as desktop audio 2 which is my headset. Um, and hopefully by doing all of that um, then when you do your live stream the stream can be demonstrating the game and everybody can hear what the, what the, players, the players are saying. Um, so I hope that was um, was was helpful. Um, the um, it's a certain learning curve using using the whole um, Twitch um, TV thing and streaming. Um, and really, you just have to have a go. You have to sort of install the you know, get yourself set up with the channel on Twitch, download something like the OBS software, and just start playing. And there are quite a lot of videos out there that tell you how, how to do that. And in the case of um, um, Tabletopia, they've actually given us some uh, really quite useful um, hints and suggestions. So if you go to the Virtually Expo um, website um, and go to uh, how it works and exhibiting, that brings you to this screen here. And there are lots of FAQs on this screen. Uh, and some of them talk about technological solutions to running a virtual stand, uh, including um, how to how to do um, streaming a game demo, uh, with, um, with which is a link to their own video that they've done, which is no doubt an awful lot better than mine, um, and how to set up the sources that we were talking about earlier, um, and the and then how to stream out your game. You can see that on this particular image here, they've actually had images of the people playing the game as well. Now, of course, it's entirely possible to to do that as well. You could you could have the game happening and then maybe share the game in something like Zoom where now you've got videos, that you've got your own screen which you can share and you can show the images of other people playing the game um, as well. Uh, but that's starting to get a little bit more uh, advanced. At a basic level um, I would suggest run the game, use Discord to communicate so you can hear and listen to the people playing the game and then if you want to stream uh, the uh, the game, then in OBS you make sure that you can that you're setting the um, uh, the display that you've got the game visible on here, and that the audio is set up to uh, to capture the audio from the other people as well as yourself. And that I hope uh, was was a useful little video on how to do those things. Uh, there'll be more of these videos uh, going. Uh, going into the future. Thanks for that.